Hey guys, Stralik here, back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you a general overview about the new mode, Gold and Gears, and things that you can do to at least complete the mode and get all of the jades. In total, there's about 4,000 jades you can get from Gold and Gears. Starting off with the gameplay rewards section. For this section, what pretty much matters is completing these conditions, and all of these conditions involve using some of the dices. These dices can be found in the dice customization tab. All you have to do is use the dice that is said in the uh, achievement, and also make sure to take Take into account the difficulties it says. You do have to unlock some of these dices by just using the first dice first. That's pretty much it for that. This is the only part of these that give no jades, so you don't really need to pay attention to this, and if you want these, they're pretty simple to just follow. For Conundrum, it looks pretty difficult, definitely, but there's one thing to consider. You don't get any jades after difficulty 6. So. As long as you clear up to difficulty 6, that's all the jades from Conundrum. And I'm going to show a strategy that I used that is pretty free to play uh, that can get you up to at least Conundrum level 6. Anything after that, uh, you might need a little more investment, but it's definitely possible. Just very time consuming. And one thing that confused me at first, the unlock progress or basically just the secrets tree. What you do is you have to follow the bar that shows up at the top of Simulate Universe. Every single run it shows up. If you have completed this tree in a full run and you're wondering why it didn't give you the secret, there's one thing to consider. It has to be at a specific difficulty sometimes. So in order to avoid this, pretty much just go for difficulty 4 uh, for every single run because that is the highest difficulty that the secrets will be unlocked in. From this progress tree alone, you get about 1100 jades and a self-modeling resin, so it's very worth it to grind these out if you have the time. But there's one big thing that the secret tree also allows that gives you even more jades. You might notice the treasure icon right next to these secrets. These give dice faces, and each one of these dice faces counts towards the dice face index, and the dice face index gives 60 jades per every 16, I believe. Alright, and now for the strategy that I use to clear, I think up to conundrum level 10 it worked for me, but it was very time consuming, I had to change my strategy. So what I did is I chose Remembrance. For my team, I just used DPS, March, preservation unit. You could use a uh, trailblazer here, but if you have Fujuan, obviously use her. And then you just need a healer. Like for example, you could put Bailu, uh, Natasha. I do recommend you use double sustain, march, and just a DPS. For remembrance, the best DPS you can use is Jingliu. I don't have her, so I just put my Kafka there because it kind of doesn't really matter who you put as long as they do damage because even Jingliu tickles the enemy. So... As long as they do some kind of damage, it'll add up eventually. Yeah, the, the backbone of this strategy is to freeze the enemies, so if you have Gepard, 100% put Gepard instead of where I have Fujuan. Uh, you could also just use, like, uh, Gepard, Trailblazer, but yeah. Gepard's skill has a base chance to freeze higher than March's ultimate, which is what makes her so good for this strategy. Uh, she is one of the only units that freezes and it's on her ultimate, so that's what'll help you freeze early on in the run. One other thing you could do for a DPS, it just requires investment, is Herda. Herda is a very good uh, unit for the Remembrance run, because Ice Break Effect is freezing, which is the backbone of this run. So at the very least, she will hit the enemy a lot due to her follow-up attack and skill, but she also can just freeze the enemy with her Break Effect. That's why you want as many Ice units as you can use. But of course, if you can't afford to invest in them, you don't need to. As for dice faces, I use this dice face. I cleared up to 8 with this, my bad. You want to get as many elite domains as possible, because this will allow for the highest chances to get Dissociation Blessings, which is the backbone of this run. This is why you don't need to have a DPS on your team, because Dissociation is your DPS. Dissociation will basically just take a chunk of their health every time you hit them. Okay, like I said, this is what we want to go for. Obviously, in Conundrum, you're not going to want to go for this, like, go out of your way for it. If you get lucky enough to get this, that's cool, but you're in an optimal run, you're not going to want to touch the Intracognition plane once, because for this run, you just want to go in as many elite domains as possible. These are the most important Remembrance Blessings that I believe you should probably reset your run if you don't have by the end of the first plane. This one is obviously 
the best blessing you can get for your run because this makes everything possible. Um, when you attack a frozen enemy, you can apply dissociation. And this also unlocks the tree for other dissociation blessings. And once you get this tree, you will actually start to be able to do a significant amount of damage. I believe this is the second best blessing you can get in this run. Basically, this means that you can infinitely stack dissociation and in turn infinitely do damage to them. Only issue is that sometimes they resist it or they just don't get frozen. But of course, you're going to want to enhance this one and this one. Obviously, you also want this one. This one occurs less if you don't have like a main ice DPS. But yeah, every time you weakness break them, you're going to want to weakness break them with a ice DPS. That way you just immediately freeze them and then apply dissociation. This almost never was that helpful for me, but if you have an ice DPS, it will be very helpful. This blessing is very amazing due to the fact that you can just freeze an enemy no matter what just with a base chance of hitting them. Sometimes you go a while without just freezing an enemy. This will change the duration that you go without freezing them significantly. It adds an extra chance to freeze them, more chances to apply dissociation, very good blessing. This is a blessing that prevents you from getting stonewalled by enemies that are ice resistant, like literally ones that are made of ice, uh, and also things like Kokolia. This allows it so that they can get frozen or at least have a chance to. So if you can pick this one up after you get the dissociation or you just are forced to, it's a good blessing. This one is very good due to the fact that anytime you just deal damage, this even counts DOTs, so if you're using like a DOT as well, this allows for that to also freeze the enemy. Obviously, every single dissociation blessing is, you, you wanna go for that immediately. This one basically means that once they lose dissociation, they can just get their freeze extended for a turn, which is very helpful, which means that you can infinitely extend that turn if you get lucky enough. And then this one is what allows you to do so much damage because this means that you do more damage to them and they take more damage from dissociation and it just stays after it's removed, which is a really good blessing for just doing pure damage. Now for Path Resonance, I recommend this one first, First Love once more, and then Total Recall, and then rich experience. This one takes priority the most because this allows for you to get more just path resonance more frequently and actually freeze the enemy. This one makes it so that the enemy actually gets frozen more, so it, it's between total recall and first love once more, but you can choose whichever one you believe is better, but I could see either one being the case because this one makes it so that you actually have a chance to freeze the enemy with resonance. And this one is also incredibly good, but you could probably avoid because Enemies love to resist Eonian River, but once it hits, it gives them an extra turn of freezing. One last thing to consider in this run is that there are path resonances. These are incredibly important, especially the propagation resonance. This one makes it so that basic attacks, so your supports, will have a chance to inflict dissociation on frozen enemies. This blessing alone gives you dissociation, but it does not unlock the tree, unfortunately. But if you're really desperate, this one helps incredibly. This preservation resonance is very good due to the fact that it gives you extra survivability and allows you to not get one-shotted as often. But yeah, these are just some tips that I learned from playing Golden Gears so often, and I hope it helps you as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.